Hello, my wonderful friends. Magus here for morning message number 21. And today I want to talk to my Order of the Magi, or as I'm thinking about calling them, the Sisterhood of the Magi. You guys are amazing. You bless me more than you know. Not only do you cover me in your prayers and love and healing and protection, but you are reaching out to each other and to others and sharing this message of love and light. As you, many of you know this morning in the comments, there was a story uh, that really touched my heart. And the only thing I knew to do was contact you guys and have you minister because no one can do it better than you. You have such a heart and love and you guys bless me so much. And, and another thing that just amazed me was when I saw that comment and was going to go ask you guys to pray with her, I had found that you had already been doing that without me even asking and what can I say about that you guys are amazing and so I thought well what did I want to do today I wanted to do something on love and um, I went through all these different stories from uh, the Magi's teachings on love to Jesus's teachings on love and it just dawned on me what could I teach you guys about love you are love you guys teach me about love and so I decided today instead just to read you a story that might awaken something inside of you, a memory, hallelujah. Breath of my breath, spirit of my spirit. When I was a little child in my father's palace and enjoyed wealth and luxury of those who nurtured me, my parents equipped me with provisions and sent me out from the east, our homeland. From the wealth of our treasury, they gave me a great burden, which was light so that I could carry it by myself. Gold from the land above, silver from great treasures and stones, Chalcedonies of India and agates from Kushan. And they girded me with steel and they took away from me the garment set with gems and spangled with gold, which they had made out of love for me. And the yellow robe, which was made for my size, and they made a covenant with me and wrote it in my mind that I might not forget. If you go down to Egypt and bring the one pearl, which is in the land of the devouring spirit, you shall put on again that garment set with stones and the robe which lies over it. And with your brother, our next in command, you shall be a herald of our kingdom. So I departed from the east on a difficult and frightening road, led by two guides, and I was very young to travel on it. I passed over the borders of the Mosani, where there is the meeting place of the merchants of the east, and reached the land of the Babylonians. I went down to Egypt, and my companions parted from me. I went straight to the serpent and stayed near his den until he should slumber and sleep so that I might take the pearl from him. Being alone, I altered my appearance and seemed an alien even to my own people. But I saw one of my kinsmen there, a freeborn man from the east, a youth fair and beautiful, the son of the courtiers. He came and kept me company, and I made him my intimate friend, a comrade with whom I communicated my business. Being exhorted to guard against the Egyptians and partaking of unclean things, I clothed myself in garments like theirs, so I would not be seen as a stranger, and was one who had come from abroad to take the pearl, lest the Egyptians might arouse the serpent against me. But somehow they learned that I was not their countryman. They dealt with me treacherously, and I tasted their food. I no longer recognized that I was a king's son, and I served their king. I forgot the pearl for which my parents had sent me, and I fell into a deep sleep because of the heaviness of their food. While I was suffering these things, my parents were aware of it and grieved over me, and a proclamation was heralded in our kingdom that all should present themselves at our doors, the kings of Parthia and those in office, and the great men of the east, resolved that I should not be left in Egypt. So the courtiers wrote me a letter. From your father, the king of kings, and your mother, the mistress, mistress of the east, to our son in Egypt, greetings. Awake and rise from your sleep. Listen to the words in this letter. Remember you are the son of a king. You have fallen beneath the yoke of slavery. Remember your gold spangled garment. Recall the pearl for which you were sent to Egypt. Your name has been called to the book of life together with that of your brother, whom you have received in our kingdom. And the king sealed it to make it an ambassador. I rose from my sleep when I recognized its voice. I took it up and kissed it 
and I read, and what was written concerned that which was engraved on my heart. And I immediately remembered that I was the son of the king and that my freedom demanded my people. I remembered the pearl for which I had been sent to Egypt and the fact that I had come to snatch it from the terrifying serpent. I subdued it by calling out my father's name and I snatched the pearl and turned about to go to my parents and I took off the dirty clothing and left it behind in their land and directed my way forthwith to the light of our eastern home and on the road I found a female who lifted me up. She awakened me, giving me an oracle with her voice and guided me to the light. The royal silken garment shone before my eyes and with familiar love leading me and drawing me on, I passed the labyrinth and leaving Babylon behind. On the left, I reached Masan, which is a great coast. But I could not recall my splendor, for it had been a while, and I was still a child and quite young that I had left it behind in my father's palace. But when suddenly I saw my garment reflected as in a mirror, I perceived it in my whole self as well. For though we originated from the one and the same, we were partially divided. Then again we were one with a single form. The treasurers who had brought the garment I saw as two beings, but there existed a single form in both, one royal symbol consisting of two halves. And they had my money and wealth in their hands and gave me my reward, the fine garment of glorious colors, which is embroidered with gold, precious stones, and pearls to give a good appearance. It was fastened at the collar, and the image of the king was all over it. Stones of lapis lazul had been skillfully fixed to the collar, and I saw in turn the motions of knowledge were stirring throughout it. And that it was prepared to speak, then I heard it speak, it is I who belong to the one who is stronger than all people and for whose sake I was written about by the Father himself. And I took note of my stature and all the royal feelings rested on me. As its energy increased, thrust out by his hand, the garment hastening to me, I went to receive it and a longing aroused in me to rush and meet it and receive it. And I stretched out and took it and adorned myself with the beauty of its colors and I covered myself completely with my royal robe. When I had put it on, I ascended to the land of peace and homage, and I lowered my head and prostrated myself before the splendor of the Father who had sent it to me. For it was I who had obeyed his commands, and it was I who also had kept the promise, and I mingled at the doors of his ancient royal building. He took delight in me and received me in his palace. God bless you guys. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow.